Hey everyone, welcome to the Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word, we're in the book of the prophet Zechariah. And in chapter 7, I want to share verses 8 uh, through the end of the chapter there, through verse 14. And, and let's talk just for a few minutes today about faithfulness. If you would, hear the word of the Lord. Then this message came to Zechariah from the Lord. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. Judge fairly and show mercy and kindness to one another. Do not oppress widows, orphans, foreigners, and the poor, and do not scheme against each other. Your ancestors refused to listen to this message. They stubbornly turned away and put their fingers in their ears to keep from hearing. They made their hearts as hard as stone, so they could not hear the instructions or the messages the, that the Lord of Heaven's armies had sent them by His Spirit through the earlier prophets. That is why the Lord of Heaven's armies was so angry with them. Since they refused to listen when, they, when, when I called to them, I would not listen when they called to me, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. As with a whirlwind, I scattered them among the distant nations where they lived as strangers. Their land became so desolate that no one even traveled through it. They turned their pleasant land into a desert. Well, friends, we're told here in chapter 7 that the people of Bethel, they, they sent uh, folks to come and, and to talk to folks in Jerusalem, the religious leaders, the priests and the prophets, to ask if they should continue, if they should carry on this, this sort of ritual grieving that they had been doing every year on the anniversary of the destruction of the temple. They would they would have this sort of ceremonial grieving. They would mourn over the loss of the temple. And now that it's being rebuilt, they want to know, should we actually carry on with the mourning, the fasting, the the this the show of, of grief and the Lord's response is essentially not yes or no but to inform them that they're asking the wrong question that the real question to ask before they even get to yes or no should we do this particular activity the real question is Lord what does faithfulness look like to you because there's a couple of things here that we can see. Faithfulness, we see, is not a matter of location or of place. We're given the detail of Bethel purf purposely here, pur purposefully, <laughs> I can say that, um, because of the fact that as we look biblically, there is a decision, a big decision of faithfulness made in this place. As a matter of fact, that's why it's called Bethel because of this encounter and the decision that's made. But then also we see a decision for unfaithfulness in this place. Let me, let me share those with you because I think this is really important to what God's showing us today, or at least part of what God's showing us in the Scripture today. This is from Genesis chapter 28 and beginning in verse 10, and we'll read through the end of that chapter. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled toward Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stop there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you're lying on belongs to you. I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you, and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land, and I will not leave you until I've finished giving you everything I promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway of heaven. 
The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against and set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named that place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Luz. Then Jacob made this vow, if God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place of, for worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. So there is this encounter with God. God essentially reaffirms the promise that he had given to Abraham. For the land, yes, but more importantly, that, that this people would be a blessing. They would be blessed to be a blessing to all the earth. And of course, we know that that blessing is given, is fulfilled through Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment of this promise. So there is a decision for faithfulness here. Jacob says, he will be my God. I commit myself to him. But then we find in that very same place a decision for unfaithfulness. As the northern kingdom, the northern tribes of Israel, rebel against, uh, rebel against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. They separate off from the southern kingdom of Judah. So in this divided kingdom, Jeroboam is the king of Israel, of the northern kingdom. And Jeroboam makes this decision that we read about in 1 Kings chapter 12 where he sets up alternative worship sites so that the people would no longer go to Jerusalem because he knew if they worshiped together with the people of the southern kingdom that eventually they would reunite and Jeroboam would be out of his kingship. Jeroboam thought to himself, unless I'm careful, the kingdom will return to the dynasty of David. When these people go to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord, they will again give their allegiance to King Rehoboam of Judah. They will kill me and make him their king instead. So on the advice of his counselors, the king made two gold calves. He said to the people, It is too much trouble for you to worship in Jerusalem. Look, Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of Egypt. He placed these calf, these calf idols in Bethel, same place we're talking about, and in Dan, at either end of his kingdom. But this became a great sin, for the people worshipped the idols, traveling as far north as Dan to worship the one there. And so there is a decision for great unfaithfulness then also at Bethel, and the point being that God brings us to these places. For instance, God brings us to church. But just being in church is not in itself faithfulness. God brings us into His presence to make a decision to follow Him, a decision to obey Him, to be faithful to Him. And not only is faithfulness not just equated with a location, but also faithfulness is not just a matter of activity. It is a matter of obedience. The people here are doing this ritual every year, every year, every year, and yet the Lord says, you weren't really doing that for me. That was for you. They were doing that not to offer themselves in repentance and faithfulness to the Lord. The Lord, the, the temple was destroyed because of our sin. God, we repent of that sin. We yearn to be faithful to you. It, it was really about them. It was a ritual that made them appear faithful, made them feel as though they were doing something for God. And yet repeating that ritual was not, in fact, faithfulness. Faithfulness looks like, as we read here, open, uh, open and soft hearts, open ears and hearts soft hearts that are soft before God. It looks like being obedient to God's Word. It looks like doing what is just and right. It looks like, like this faithfulness where we listen. We listen for the Lord's rebuke. We listen for the, the leading of His Spirit. We listen as God disciplines and encourages and strengthens and leads us. Then, then, you see, when we have that heart for the Lord, ears that are open, hearts that are soft before God, the eyes of our hearts 
directed toward God, looking to Him, seeking to be obedient and faithful. When we do that, when we do come into the presence of God, when we come to church, when we, when we do activities, we are doing them for God and not for us. We are, we are pouring our praise out. We are, we are surrendering ourselves to the Lord, giving ourselves to Him, because that, that's where life is truly found, in surrender, in obedience, and in faithfulness. And may it be so for us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.